Nigeria as uh, sick criminals. And if there's anything that you should do or you should be doing as we speak, it is for you and me eh, to bond together and see through the barbariga, see the nakedness of uh, the lunatics that are making laws, passing laws, and those who are sitting as judges, you could see that, you see, they are, the, the, I mean, sorry, their sickness is beyond just being greedy. They are mentally sick. And what mentally sick people does is they destroy. Now, when they destroy, they don't know until they are stopped. How many of you have heard from some of these past public officials that will later come back and say, oh, I wish... I wish I did so so and so when I was there. Obasanjo was governor, I mean, sorry, was president of Nigeria for three years, between 1976 to 1979. He came back hmm, 30 years later, no, is it 30 years later or 20 years later? 20 years later, Obasanjo came back and he became the president of Nigeria for eight years. And for that eight years, the road, to his own author, hmm? Songwater, author in Ogun State, became a famous road for his deplorability, like for his state of, uh, you know, deplorable that it was all over the world. Oberson just wrote to his house in Ota. Oberson just wrote to his house in Ota. He spent eight years. One day he was being asked if there's anything that he regrets. He said he regrets nothing. I have no regret. I wish I did something about uh, the road to my house in Ota. Because I have been calling the Ogun State government to do something about it. Isn't that uh, the symptom of sick people? When they finally possibly have wrecked that work and they have made their destruction felt. So they turn around and be like, oh, I would have done so, so, and so. I would have invested in this. Oh, I would have, uh, sure you get they always have regrets. Or maybe I should have done more destruction than that. Or I should have uh, maybe killed more people than that. Stuff like that. They always have regrets of something they didn't do. But when they are right there, when they could make a difference, eh? everything they stand for or represent will be on how to further dip the people, their own people, in more poverty. So, I am asking you, brethren, this uh, morning, this afternoon, or this evening, that on this uh, special broadcast, eh, I want you to uh, please begin to think if it is really comfortable, if you are comfortable to be led or spoken to, okay, by mentally deranged people, sick people, okay? that have not received help. You see, when you are mentally sick, you can hurt a lot of people around you. That's what these criminals are doing. They are hurting you. Economically, they are hurting you. They are bleeding you. Okay, but they do not see it that way. It's they are sick. Now, since they are sick, the ideal thing is to try your best to never reinforce them. You should do your best to neutralize them, invest in that. If you don't stop them, they will never stop. So when somebody asks me, how do you stop them? First is to see them for who they are. And then you begin to reject them rather than reinforce them. Now rejecting them instead of reinforcing them is part of the, you know, it is part of the preparation and healing process from the mental damages that you've been subjected to all your life. You have been seeing people that look like normal, but they are not. So now that you are going to see them for sick, they, and how do you know they are sick? Take a look at all their decisions. The ones they are making, the cries of the people, their own reactions to those cries, and what they do after that. Those are the symptoms, those, those are the signs to show to you that you are dealing with sick people who refuse to go and get help. So once you begin to realize that uh, 
It's like being in an asylum with sick people who have refused to take their med medication. So if they have done that, you can never allow them to make decisions, critical decisions on your behalf. So mentally, you begin to now feel like, come on, no, 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 this is not normal. We need to do something. Then you will mean it. Do you get that now? Because you have to mean it. You must mean when you say, let's do something. And there are also, well, there is a part where the willing, uh, the willing buyer and the willing seller. That could be the moment we can start talking about when do you think we can break off from all of this? And then people can say, it's a matter of time. But for now, a lot of you are confused. It's okay. It's all right to be confused. Like, I, I don't understand. I understand that you don't understand. And if you don't understand, you will. You have been looking at these guys as greedy. In fact, some of you want them harmed. I mean, if we, if we grab this, we were supposed to do this, this or that. But somehow you are restricted because they are protected. They are guided. They are like, you know, so you can't really do it to them. Eh? But they are sick people. That requires urgent incarceration. And the moment you begin to actually see that, you will be motivated by the feelings that you are trying to help them. Do you understand? Yeah. You must mentally build uh, this personality. Because it is for your own good. It is for my own good. It's for your own good in the sense that, like I said, if these guys are not stopped, eh, they will keep doing everything they can to reappear on the surface and further destroy not just the present but the future because they do not even understand what they are doing. It is a sickness. So once you begin to have that personality that makes you feel like if we found ourselves, we then need to stop these guys, like Salvation Army. Kind of. Yeah. There are many of you who have that gift. But you just need to be equipped. Equipped with the understanding of the people you are dealing with. So when you look at them, when they stand in front of you, you are not going to be seeing a governor. You are not going to be seeing a, a president. You are not going to be seeing a senator. You are not going to be seeing all these big men politicians. You will be seeing sick people. Because something tells you to do something about it. You won't see all those security people around them. No, you won't. You will see the soul that needed to be captured, the ASAP, and kept somewhere before they hurt more people. Now, when we have enough of us who are in that kind of uh, state of, uh, you know, eye alertness, we will know. They too will know. So something has to happen that has to snap them back to life. Of course, you must understand them more. You must see them beyond the physical future that you are seeing. You've got to listen to them. You've got to look straight into their eyes. You've got to go and take their pictures. Every one of them that you have their story. Their stories, you know, it's out there. Download their pictures, take a look at their videos, look straight into their eyes, check out the camera moves, see what they say and what they and then check out their track record, put everything together, and then you'll come around and come to the conclusion that these are sick people. My you are right. Because I am right. When you see them as a thieves who takes money, who have this power, who have this money, something is still going to be telling you to. You are powerless. You can't do anything. It's because of the way you are looking at it. But when you look at them, you realize that, God, 
damn man, sick person, making decisions on life and death. How is that even possible? It is because the system is built that way. And that is why they would rather steal everything and even die in the contraption too, without giving any of it back. So you have to kind of have that understanding. So if people ask me uh, for solutions, this solution that I keep saying, the solution will have to start with you. Okay? Because you see, knowledge is power. And knowledge, the power in knowledge is for those who really, really seek it. Yeah. And I want you to seek that knowledge. That knowledge is where the strength, the strength that will liberate every one of us, which starts from within, it has to start from you. You must actually have yourself equipped enough to say, I can do this. And we need more people to be so liberated in their mind this way. The ones that will see, they will see their targets. Hmm? You see or you look at your targets. And it's like you're having an extra eyes. Okay? Extra eyes. It looks through them and you're like, oh, damn it, man. So how do we get rid of this person? So to get in, to do whatever you have to do and all of that stuff until you have a system whereby it becomes very dangerous. Hmm? To be motivated and become one of them. Because you have no idea what's going to probably happen. Because you see, the, the danger in all of this is that they put limitation, they put sort of, a, you know, progress. They put limitation to progress of anything and everything. So, their way will continue to shun out people who shouldn't be poor, but will end up poor. So a situation like this cannot be sustained hmm, if uh, they do not have people like them that continue to reinforce them. So you would have to have that mentality of, uh, yeah, you've got to have that mentality of understanding that uh, the lunatics that are ruining Nigeria, they are supposed to be in uh, asylum not in any public office that is why you cannot have meaningful conversation any progressive conversation the entire system is rigged corrupt enough that the sick people running it eh? they have no idea the damages they are doing and even when they do they have become so narcissistic that they actually enjoy it that's the way I see it. And if there is no system to kill them, a lot of you would have to do that studying. And you would have to do the cleansing. And yes, we can have a proper conversation in a proper society. I do not want to exist in the same space as a country with uh, the jihadist Fulani. I don't want to, I'm not, I don't hate Fulanis because it doesn't really matter anymore. Right? I do not, because I do not have much contact with Fulanis for real. But at the same time, in a country where Fulani terrorists, mm -hmm. well, seems to have a, a better citizenship right or a protection than myself, eh? an unarmed, not a terrorist Yoruba man. So if I have a choice, of course, I don't want to be in the same country with a Fulani terrorist. Do you get what I mean? I'm not saying I don't want to be in the same country with the Fulanis, okay? Because a country is not just, uh, you know, uh, it's not called a country, so to say, uh, you know, by the, uh, you know, by the, uh, just the people who are the indigenous people from that uh, space, right? So you also have those who are probably going to be uh, living and residing in your country under your country rule and law. So that is how I want to exist with anyone not just the Fulanese. And I'm never going to get that. 
because the sick people from my own part of uh, Nigeria, Yoruba land, they believe it is their turn to loot and empty the treasury of Nigeria, further help Nigeria to push our people into further uh, impoverishment. So if I have a choice, I don't want to be in the same country. And I know there are Yorubas who want to be in the same country with them. That's where the healthy conversation comes in. I am somebody who doesn't impose. Okay? So I am somebody who believes that uh, for those of you who want to be part of Nigeria, that is where the conversation comes in. Healthy one. But you want Nigeria. I don't want Nigeria. The only thing that could actually decide for me and you is when we are allowed to choose and decide. So which means you are going to vote for Nigeria. I'm going to vote for Yoruba Nation, right? Yeah, don't ask me any of your dumb, stupid questions for now. I'm just talking about choice now. Okay? So don't ask me all your stupid, dumb, uh, what have you. I'm talking to that person who probably would uh, want uh, us to, to uh, want, want me to tell him who are those who are going to lead Yoruba Nation. So don't ask me that yet. I am saying, when we say we have a choice, because what happened is this. If you and I can have a discussion, disagreement, agreement, and the rest of that, right? About, I want uh, Nigeria. No, I want Yoruba nation. That simply means each camp will have those who are driving them, right? So that means there will be identified, educated, enlightened a group handling the campaign for Yoruba nation. When uh, you have an healthy place to have that conversation, Abi. It's okay. That's what that is the democracy or democratic part of it. You want Nigeria. I don't want Nigeria. But you feel powerful. You feel, you feel like you are not, you are something. Because the ruiners of Nigeria, they don't want Yoruba nation. They don't want Biafra. They don't want anything other than this Nigeria. You want Nigeria. But if I ask you, what exactly is that direct benefit of uh, being a Nigerian and wanting Nigeria? You likely won't be able to say to me, other than say, you shall want Nigeria, which is all right. I don't want it. So why should the army want to shoot me and not you? Once this is about choice, well, the reason why the army will shoot me and not you is because you want status quo that we can still sit down here like this in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, talking about the failure of these criminals and the lives they have destroyed in 20 years' time. As long as you are still bearing Nigeria, 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 you are fine. Abi? So that's what they want. So yours is fine, but mine is not. But I'm not even allowed to discuss it or choose it. You are happy, you feel powerful. That is not democratic. What I will do then is that uh, it is going to lead uh, to a very serious, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, violent dissolution. That one is terrible. And that's what we are trying to say, that uh, lunatics are those who would rather criminalize self-rule and self-determination, right? <laughs> lunatics, sick people. Not that they are offering you anything better, what they are offering you is like shit and like, you know, but you can't have another thing because it's working for them. So that is why we would, you know, we must have that uh, in mind. When you are dealing with sick people, you must be very, very knowledgeable of uh, what damage they can cause. And yours, once the time is right, ours is to cut them down. So again, tonight's chat is just going to be a hard to hard talk this way that we've never sort of, we've never spoken like this, right? Because it is new. I just found out. And I found this and I'm like, oh my God. We have been looking at these guys so wrongly. And that is why somehow, because we look at them as criminals as they are, uh, and then we feel like, oh, that makes them powerful, or maybe untouchable. And then we step back. We just feel like, oh, you know what? 
You just leave it to God. Don't leave it to God. Because there's no God to leave it to. Are you with me? If these guys are not stopped, they will never stop. Man, no use of my mouth. I have other things I would like to share with you, but uh, because I don't want to take calls tonight, I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Okay? And I will take it on from there. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.
oni kan sati se to ya ki won se ma won ara ilu to pe won de be o aye aye ko ti de gogo ojelu e sura ki aye ko ti de gogo ojelu e sura ki sugba ni ma ti se yi to ya ki won se omo ba de ro o ni fi won ni ro my city, all right, you said. My city, all right, you said. Any city,